just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Here we want to mark the 13th anniversary of one of the most iconic franchises in gaming history, we review a collection of 4 classic games that define the generation. Can this game breathe new life to the franchise before Frontiers' release in fall this year? Or should this collection of games be dead and buried? Well, let's find out. Okay everyone, I believe I have a little explaining to do. During the recording of the fourth part of my Let's Play of Half-Life 2, I promised I would review this collection of games on its launch day. Well, yeah, let's talk a bit more about this. Yesterday my dad called me from under the radar, offering me to go with him to see the new Tom Cruise film Top Gun Maverick. Me being a big aviation buff, it was truly was an offer I couldn't refuse. The f By the way guys, the film is excellent, especially the air-to-air -air dogfighting sequences. Obviously, by the time this film was finished, it was by far too late for me to even start this review. So, with all of this aside, let's go on with this review. During the 1990s when gaming was back in its feet from the industry crash from the mid to late 80s, home consoles was dominated by two global icons representing two different companies. A red plumber named after Nintendo's founder Shigi Emoto's angry landlord, Mario, and a speedy blue hedgehog, Sonic. Today, Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the biggest brand that the gaming industry as a whole has. As a case in point, earlier on this year, Paramount released the second entry of the video game adaptation for the franchise. It came on to become one of the biggest selling video game movie adaptation ever, raking in over a massive $400 million at the box office. In terms of gaming, the original Sonic the Hedgehog was released for the Sega Genesis in 1991. One year later, its sequel Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was released, again for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive over here in Europe. My review of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 can be found both in the video's description or this blog post you probably are currently reading. In 1994, the third entries of the series got released. This entry only covered about half the game's story. This was due to time constraints and the limited amount of storage space available in a standard Sega Genesis cartridge. The game had to be split into two separate games, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic & Knuckles. The Sonic & Knuckles cartridge can they also contained an adapter. If you plug in the original Sonic the Hedgehog 3 cartridge into the adapter, the entirety of the game can be played. The development of this final game of this collection is indeed a strange one. The development of Sonic CD began in 1992 when Sega of Japan developed what is supposed to be the original Sonic the Hedgehog 2. When the prototype of the game was sent to Sega of America for publishing, well, it got rejected outright. Sega of Japan then kept their version of the game on hold. When the Sega CD add-on for the Genesis was released, Sega of Japan took the original prototype of what would have been Sonic the Hedgehog 2, added in more content, and released the game under the name Sonic CD. This collection combines all four games, or five if you're counting Sonic and Knuckles, into one collection, re-released and playable on modern day systems, even the next generation PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. The game allows you to play the four classic games I have mentioned in this review in one convenient collection. The accessibility scores are as well. To kick a preceding visibility gave a 9.5. There is no colorblind mode available in its interface. The majority of the game is very easily playable for colorblind players. However, Sonic 3 Knuckles special stages can pose a problem. The goal of these stages are simple, to touch all blue spheres around the stage. 
while avoiding red spheres. When a blue sphere is touched, it changes to a red sphere. I think you can see the issue here. As I've said time and time again, red and blue are not the hardest hit when it comes to colorblind players and still needs addressing nonetheless. So this game is easily playable for players with visual impairment. However, a colorblind mode in terms of reference to the special stages of Sonic 3 Knuckles would make this game more accessible. Next up, audibility, I give it 10. Due to the limited storage space available in a Sega Genesis cartridge, there is no spoken dialogue in all four games. So a subtitle function would not be required. On top of that, there are no elements of these games will cause issues for players with hearing impairments. Next up, Mobility E7. There is no way to change the controls and then the game's options menu, but the controls are very simple in all four games of this collection. And so a player with a mobility impairment will find few issues when playing this game. On the other hand, customizable controls would make this game more accessible, even better on a game-by-game -game basis. Last but certainly not least, gameplay I give it 10. For one of these, you will be getting exactly what you pay for. All four games are playable right at the bat. There are two ways to play all four games, Classic and Anniversary. Classic mode allows the game to be played in the classic 4x3 screen ratio with a finite number of lives. When your life counter hits zero, game over, yeah! Wait, sorry, wrong game. Anniversary mode, on the other hand, allows you to play the game with a revamped graphics and a widescreen 16x9 ratio and an infinite number of lives. In anniversary mode, you collect coins, and this currency can be used to unlock music, cutscenes, and even retried special stages should you fail one. There is also a lot of content to keep you playing. First off, there's mission mode. Mission mode is a set of challenges, for example, defeating a certain amount of enemies in a certain zone in which you will be greeted at the end. This is a good way to earn coins. Also there is story mode. This allows you to play all four games in the order of the canon. On the other hand, the only way to play through this mode is through anniversary mode. This makes the game too easy to play as you have unlimited lives. In summary, Sonic Origins is a love letter from the company to the section of the Sonic community which prefers the classic 2D style games. It may not be as good as Mania, but it's still decent nonetheless. If you're a retro gaming enthusiast and is looking for a nostalgia fix over the summer, this game is an excellent choice. And the overall score is a highly respectable 91.25%. See you guys later on on the weekend as I go through the Turner Raven home for the fifth part of my Let's Play of Half-Life 2, Spartan Commander 1998. Roll out Spartan Legion.